Victoria. Thanks again for coming by my channel at Our Living Book. Um, today's video is uh, all around back to homeschool theme. So I'm doing a collaborative video with Becca's Homeschool Journal. I will put a link to her channel and specific video in the description box. So make sure if you, uh, once you're done watching this video, to hop on over to her channel and give hers a watch, like her video, subscribe to her channel. She has some awesome Charlotte Mason homeschooling content and I just love her. Um, so let's just jump right in. Today's topics um, that I will be talking about are my back to homeschool tips. So things to keep in mind to just help the school year run a little smoother. Also my homeschool favorites, so more of like the things that help school run a little bit smoother for me, as well as a homeschool space tour. You could probably hear Leo in the background. He's on the floor playing and he's just being very loud about it. Um, so I'm gonna jump right in and I'm gonna start with tips. So tips for starting off the year. Um, now these are things that I sat down and I thought about just from my experience homeschooling. I do have five boys, so the things that I might think are helpful might not really apply, but here they are. So tip number one, self-care. Mama, you have to take care of yourself before you can feed those little minds and hearts. Um, it's so, so important. I'm really awful at this and I'm trying so hard to get better. Um, one thing that I'm working on is getting up and ready before my kids. It's proving a challenge at this phase in life just because I still have a little nursling that's usually in bed with me at that time, latched on nursing. So that can make getting up without the kids a little bit, well, a lot of bit <laughs> difficult. But um, getting up and ready before the kids, whenever I can get up and at least put on like a fresh pair of PJs and brush my teeth and do something with my hair and start my coffee. And, like if I at least have that done, my day runs a whole lot smoother. Um, also a quiet reading time in that early morning time, if you can squeeze that in, that, that feeds my soul so much just to be able to have some quiet time and when I do take the time to prioritize reading my Bible, filling out my prayer journal, to having a little bit of quiet reading for myself, um, once I fed myself that way it just makes me a better mom. It really does. So that is going to be my number one tip. Self-care. You know, take care, take care of yourself. Feed your soul. <laughs> Um, and just the, you'll see the rest of your day will just fall into place a lot more smoothly. Tip number two, have some kind of chores schedule slash blessing hour arranged throughout the day. Um, I know that it helps me because clutter kind of drives me crazy and just makes Okay, so I have someone joining us now. Um, clutter does just drive me nuts. So it's it makes me frazzled and just I feel like when my home is disorganized that reflects my mind and when my mind is disorganized it's because a lot of the reason is because my house is disorganized and I'm not saying have a perfectly immaculate house but you know the papers everywhere like my kids love to draw and I love that they love to draw but unless I'm constantly reminding my young ones, pick up your drawings, pick up your papers. There's little bits of paper, drawings, pencils, crayons all over the place and it just like, it just really <laughs> is one of those things. One of my mom pet peeves that get me. So in general though, uh, have periods throughout the day where you gather your children, each of them is given some kind of responsibility, whether it's an older one doing the dishes or the younger ones helping you fill up the washing machine, whatever it is, get them involved and um, give yourself a blessing hour where everyone stops what they're doing and just kind of spreads out and picks up throughout the, throughout the house and it will just kind of help pick you up. Okay, so tip number three, have a plan. You know, um, have a general idea of what your homeschooling approach is. I'm a Charlotte Mason homeschooler, so that's the, the lens from which I plan. But you don't have to have like a specific 
you know, methodology uh, in order to have a plan, but have a general plan of what you want your school day to look like, um, what you want your routine to look like, but don't kill yourself coming up with like strict regimented schedules at the beginning of the school year. Like, please don't do that because 99.9% .9 of the time, what you think is gonna work at the beginning of the year is not gonna be what works you know, a month in or even oh, the first week. So just everything down in pencil and just keep in mind that whatever your first writing down is probably not gonna be what you stick with in terms of routine for the rest of the year. Um, I can't tell you how many times throughout the year we kind of just have to change things around just depending on what phase of life we're in. So yeah, just keep that in mind. Have a plan, but you know, a relaxed plan. Um, also, have something to jot down your ideas, whether it's a special notebook that you keep for yourself or a planner, um, as some kind of whiteboard that you write things down, a routine down on, or a checklist system. I've used that in the past for my oldest. Um, something to help you and your children stay on track. Um, it will just help you feel like you're accomplishing a lot more when because I've done it always I've tried to be the super strict planner and I've also been the more like oh whatever happens happens both extremes don't work for me <laughs> if one of those extremes works for you that's wonderful you know it works for you it doesn't work for me so my advice is have a plan have a, a relaxed routine but don't like be super 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 committed just in case it doesn't work also um, tip number four have set expectations for your children. So, you know, my older one knows what to expect during school hours. He knows, um, you know, what I need from him, how, what he needs to do in order, order to focus the best on his work. My little ones know that when I'm doing lessons with my oldest, it, they need to, you know, play on their own quietly. Something new that I'm going to start doing is putting my two older sons in charge of playing with the baby and my toddler, so that way I can give the other one the individual attention they need for certain subjects. Um, just know what you're. Just have your children know what to expect during school hours. If that means no TV time during school hours, then make sure that they know to expect that. Um, then that's just an example. But yeah, set expectations. That way um, you don't set up your children or yourself up for disappointment um, throughout the day. Uh, tip number five. Um, I have always homeschooled with small children. So one of the most helpful things to do is having like something special for the little ones during school time. So whether that's a certain set of puzzles that they play with during school time or a basket of special toys during school time or, you know, maybe that's the time that you would allow a little bit more of, you know, wholesome TV time just so that way you can give attention to the little ones and maybe they need some quiet time on the couch or, you know, whatever works for you. Just have something for your little ones that way you're not uh, constantly being, I mean, interruptions are gonna happen, but if you make it a little special with their special basket of toys, or maybe they have, like my toddler, you know, um, he has his own box of crayons that he's only allowed to use um, to color during school time. Um, and that's like his special box and he really gets a kick out of that. So um, yeah, just have something special for the young ones. And that's gonna vary depending on age, you know? So like with the baby, I'm gonna have my older ones take turns playing with him when I have to give my undivided attention to another child. So just get creative, something special for your little ones. So that way when you do have to give more attention to one of your older ones, um, you're able to do that a little more smoothly. <clears throat> also, um, just being flexible with little ones. You know, um, have your older ones know that sometimes we're going to be interrupted. It's okay. You know, if you have to nurse the baby while you give a math lesson, that's just the way it is. Um, and you know, don't don't uh, bum yourself out 
um, if stuff like that happens. You're not gonna have a picture perfect school day every day, or if you're me, any day. Um, but at the end of the day, as long as uh, emotions are not running high and things are relaxed and everybody has enjoyed themselves, that's really all that matters. <clears throat> okay, um, my last tip. I have five boys. <coughs> Very, very active boys. Somebody is sleepy. I have, I'm gonna stand up. I have five very active boys. So something new that I'm gonna be doing uh, this year is moving around. So um, if you've been following me for a little while, you know that we recently moved from Florida to Wisconsin. Um, we have a little bit of a bigger home. We have a finished basement with a family library and a couch and chairs set up. So what I think I'll be doing this year is moving my boys around. So having a certain amount of subjects that we cover over breakfast, um, having stuff that we do by the couch. Maybe there's a couple, like a basket of books that I will be covering downstairs in the basement. Um, <clears throat> and then coming back up for tea time for some subjects. So move around. I feel like that's gonna really help keep things a little bit more exciting and help my boys to be engaged because they've gotta move around. Um, also, make sure you're getting plenty of outside time if you can, you know, if weather permits. Uh, outside time is huge. So if you have a fenced in yard, especially even with your little ones, let them out, let them out. Especially first thing in the morning when you're trying to get everything established for the day, let them out. Utilize that outside time, get breaks. Utilize that backyard as much as possible. Um, and that's it really for my tips. So the next thing I'm gonna talk about are my favorites. So this is more categorized under the things that help me homeschool a little bit easier, just helps the day run a bit smoother. Um, and yeah, so let's just jump right okay, in. Okay, so favorite things, of course I'm gonna start with books. So part of this goes back to that quiet morning time I talked about earlier. Um, I have my Bible. Um, this is one that my husband found for me. It's a really nice older Dewey Reams edition that I love. And I also have my devotional, a Catholic Women's Book of Days, which I'm really enjoying. I have uh, the Catholic Family Handbook that I'm slowly working my way through. And I also just got the Catholic All Year Compendium just to help me plan um, how we can live more liturgically throughout the year. Um, <laughs> I have a list over here to help remind me of other things I want to talk about. Um, other books that I have, um, this prayer journal, I found it on Amazon. I'll put links to everything that I'm talking about in my description box, but I found this on Amazon and I really, really enjoy this prayer journal. It helps keep my prayer time very focused. I'm working my way through this mathematics, uh, an instrument for living teaching guide um, from Simply Charlotte Mason. Uh, since I am switching our math uh, approach for our oldest um, and simply Charlotte Mason does not yet have an elementary arithmetic text for his age. I'm using this as my guide. Um, home education is my stiff book so um, as much as I love Charlotte Mason she is a little bit difficult to read for me so I'm taking this one nice and slow. Teaching from rest uh, by Sarah McKenzie is an absolute must read. Love this book. And also a Charlotte Mason companion by Carolyn, or Carolyn, Karen Andriola. Sorry, Karen. Um, a Charlotte Mason companion by Karen Andriola is fantastic. Another one that I'm working through is No and Tell by Karen Glass, The Art of Narration. Another favorite of mine is just having a pretty mug. I drink coffee throughout my day and just having a nice mug just kind of makes me feel good. I found this one at my thrift store, it was like a dollar. So head to your local thrift stores, find yourself a cool mug, um, whether you're a coffee drinker, tea drinker, just water drinker, just some kind of pretty cup that makes you feel good when you drink out of it. Other favorites that I have are um, having a homeschool planner. I actually won an Anna Vance Paper Company homeschool planner and I am so excited about it. I don't have it yet so I can't show it to you, but I will put a link to her website and you can check out her beautiful planners. She has thought of absolutely everything 
uh, for this planner and I am so, so, so excited <laughs> that I have one. Um, but yes, yeah, some kind of a planner. Um, <clears throat> my printer and our HP Instant Ink subscription. Oh my goodness, I think we paid like $60 for our printer and it's hooked up to HP Instant Ink and it's like super cheap to print this way. Um, I will put a link to the printer that I have and then you would just have to sign up for the subscription. But to print up to 300 pages a month uh, costs us $10 a month for ink and that's it. And that includes color ink as well. It's crazy, crazy cheap. Um, so I will put a link to my printer. Another favorite is our laminator. Oh my goodness, I laminate all the things. Are you even a homeschooler if you don't have a laminator? I'm just kidding, but yes you are. <laughs> but I love my laminator. I have an Amazon Basics one that I think it was $20 and it's like the best thing. We make a lot of printables and flashcards and that's seriously one of the better homeschool investments ever. Also, I have a comb binder. I love my comb binder. Make all the homeschool books, workbooks, coloring books, it's just such a useful tool for me. Um, another favorite thing that I have is our Montessori letter set. I will put a link to the one that I have. I found it on sale. It was like $26. And I know a lot of people can find them expensive. I mean, sometimes they are. I've also seen them as much as like $50, $60. They can be pretty expensive. But if you can find one on sale, like I did, I paid like $26 or $27 for it. That's a really good deal. I find my Montessori set to be um, so useful just because there's so many letters like each it comes with like 10 of each vowel five of each consonant and I have several children and we use it for a few children and even like I have another wooden one wooden set that I picked up on Amazon I think it was like six dollars six or seven dollars but really my Montessori one was more cost effective because I have so many letters and the wooden one is not really that convenient because it only has one of each letter and you need more than one of each letter. So, you know, by the time I would get as much as the one my Montessori has, I would have spent more money. And it comes in a pretty nice wooden box. So I'll put a link to that, but I love our Montessori set. It is so useful. Um, and that's pretty much it for um, the things that I can think of off the top of my head that help school run a little smoothly. So now I'm gonna go ahead and show you a tour Okay, homeschool space number one. I do not have a homeschool room. I've tried doing the whole homeschool room thing in the past before we moved and it just doesn't work. We, we school mainly in the more common areas. So this is actually off of the side of our living room. I have my couch here. My little one is watching Little Bear right now so mommy can film. Um, but yeah, this is our school space. Uh, I made this alphabet set for our wall. Um, I have a little homeschool digital print shot that I can link below. Um, and I found this chalkboard at Hobby Lobby and with their 40% off coupon on their website, I want to say it was like less than $10. This thrift or this little thrifted basket, I think it was like 90 cents and I'm using it to hold, uh, flashcards and other things that I post or not post other things that I put up on the wall, extra things, my extra calendar cards. Um, this cork board I also found at Hobby Lobby. I want to say I paid like four dollars for it. Um, I have our picture study displayed here. This is just a wooden hanger that I had in the house and I had some wood glue and some clothespins and I just made this little hanging thing. Um, and this is what's holding our picture study. I have this here. Um, I plan on getting some little box things um, to put in this tray to hold extra pencils and such. And um, yeah, I mean, I'm not sure, sure exactly what we'll uh, put in here, but I'm sure it will be useful. I just have my comb binder on the table at the moment because I don't have another place to put it yet. We don't start school for another uh, week or two. Um, so this is not uh, where it should be. I'm not sure where it should be right now, but here's um, our bookshelves. So I keep all of our, our books here. The only books that are not here are Liam's and I keep his in the dining room and I will show you and explain why. But I have this globe. We thrifted for just a couple dollars, a paper holder. I uh, have some files in there, file folders in there holding some papers. On the side here, I have like extra cards that I need to cut out, my paper cutter, another hanger to 
display something. This is this right here is a really handy um, uh, book holder. I think it's actually like a cookbook holder, but we use it to hold our MacBook and reading books. I have our little house on the prairie set that I love. This pencil sharpener, this is actually my husband's as a kid, um, and it's still working. So this little tray just has some random things that need a home. I found this uh, trinket shelf at my thrift store for a couple dollars. We're gonna use it as a nature shelf. My husband has to put some hardware on the back of it so I can put it on a wall somewhere. Um, these are some books uh, that we read aloud at night. Um, the Magician's Nephew we're going through with everybody. And this is a book of Catholic Bible stories, or a Catholic book of Bible stories um, that we're going through with the kids. So this top shelf is all my books, and I also have some books on the bottom there. I still need to finish organizing books. This middle shelf and those books towards the left on the bottom are my oldest son's, Evans. He is in the sixth grade. We're doing an Ambleside and Modern Mobilist mashup for him. I have here uh, our history books. So I'm using a picturesque tale of progress and story of the world there. These are all of our McGuffey readers. This is just a basket of extra things, flashcards, pencils, extra supplies. Um, down there is our Bob books and my Bob books binder, some math manipulatives. This middle one has all of our nature books. And this bottom row is more like miscellaneous storybooks and readers and kind of just extra books that are in their own category. And this shelf has a lot of the books I'm using for kindergarten. This map we found at Walmart. It was like $4.88. Um, there's other, another map that I'd really like to get, um, but it's a little bit more expensive. So this is just kind of my placeholder map for now. And this cross I found a while ago at Hobby Lobby on sale, I think. And I just really like it. So yeah, this is kind of like our main our main school area so Evan does lessons here a lot um, he can he takes his books piles them up and does them here um, the kids draw here um, yeah so I'll show you our secondary school spot now so our dining room um, this is our secondary school area um, I do school at the dining room table with Liam I have one drawing right now um, we do school here at the table, so his books are kept on this shelf, and I have some other things here that I will walk you through. On the table here, I keep this basket that I found, this metal basket I found at Hobby Lobby. It was on sale, 50% off. I want to say that it was like 4 or $5, um, and I use it to hold this thrifted little basket that I found full of their crayons this cute little Ikea plant that I have, and some of their favorite drawing books. So I like to keep it here in the middle of the table. That way um, they have something there in front of them to do, and they're always drawing, and I really love that. And so I decided to feed that by encouraging them with this basket here just for them. Over here, I keep, um, these are uh, the Ikea spice racks. And this top one is full of our essential oils. I put them there to remind me to use them, so I diffuse throughout the day. I keep my diffuser on my kitchen counter, which is across from here. I have this one with our slate and some chalk. This jar holds extra pencils. I have to refill it because the kids basically eat pencils for breakfast. Um, I have my little letter board here with one of my favorite Charlotte Mason quotes. Um, this whole unit I found at our thrift store, it was like three dollars. I'm not even kidding. I mean, it's not in perfect condition. It's obviously a little worn, but I, uh, I really, I really like it. So on the top here, I have this tray that I thrifted for like a dollar with my tea set we'll be using for poetry tea time and tea time throughout the day. My goal is to have tea time every day and to do different subjects to make it interesting every day. So we'll see. I have this uh, Charlotte Mason quote that I, I made myself. I'll put the link to my shop in my bio. <clears throat> and this whole tea set I found at the thrift store in bits and pieces. Love it. This shelf here has all of our watercolor supplies, drawing pencils, brushes, um, sketchbooks. I have our uh, handbook of nature study. This is our 
brush drawing book, some watercolor paper, other drawing books that um, are more uh, nature themed that I wanted to keep up here and they're just nicer and we use them more for school so I don't have those on the table. Um, and then this is Liam's math basket. So this has his buttons, his play money uh, for math, um, craft sticks that we use for manipulatives. So I keep that up here and I take that down whenever we do math lessons. This shelf here has all of Liam's books. So all of his year one books. We're doing a mixture between Modern Mobilis and Ambleside. And I have all of his stuff here just because it makes more sense to keep it here where we do school at the table. So, and then this little white paper holder has like extra things that belong to me. You know, different things that I need to print out, things I need to laminate and stuff of that nature. So here is our printer. It's a little bit dirty right now. I have to wipe that down, but this is my printer. I have this paper tray down here holding my paper, my laminating sheets, um, my cardstock. That cardboard box next to it is holding all of my um, spines for my comb binder. And this is my laminator. I keep our Montessori set on the bottom shelf here. And it's, it is large and it's an odd size, so I keep it here on the bottom of this shelf. It sticks out a little, but it doesn't really get in the way down here. Underneath that, I have a DIY sand tray that I made and I keep some flashcards and our Montessori mat that just helps things not slide all over the place there. And that is it. Those are my homeschool spaces. So this is where we school in our dining room. And this is where we have uh, our school in our living room. And we kind of move around, we go to the couch. I plan to utilize the downstairs library a lot more. And yep, yeah, that's our space. That's it. Those are my tips, my favorites, and our homeschool spaces. So if you have any questions about anything that I talked about or anything that I showed you, or how I organized certain things, just leave me a comment below. Or you can find me on Instagram at Our Living Book. I'm pretty active on there and I post a lot in stories and I um, am usually pretty good at getting to my DMs pretty quickly. You can also email me at ourlivingbook at gmail.com. So thanks again for joining in and watching this video. Like it if this was helpful to you. Subscribe to my channel so you're notified when I post new content. And go ahead and visit Becca's Homeschool Journal. I'm going to link to her video and channel below. Thanks again.